Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing something wildly different, and I, I mean that in every sense of the word. Um, before I get into the knife, however, I want to make a quick apology. I'm just coming off a really bad head cold. I'm a little bit stuffy. might be hard to understand, but uh, I'm only doing this now because I've been sitting on these knives for about a week, and I've been wanting to get the video done. I've been tragically sick. And I'm really excited about getting this video done, so I'm just kind of uh, rushing into it, even though my, uh, my voice isn't quite ready for it. What we're looking at here is the HEA Designs Equilibrium. Now, you might recognize the HEA Designs logo and name from a video I did a few months ago, or closer to last year, on the Sabretooth. And I had uh, Sam's prototype before. This is the production Sabretooth. And at that time, I mentioned they were going to be making a flipper knife as well. And that is exactly what you're seeing here. Now, what makes this different is the fact that it's shaped unlike any other knife you're likely to ever come across. This is more of a true scimitar shape. Look at that intense curve there. Love the addition of the harpoon on there as well. This is a very, very slick knife. And, uh, you know, sometimes we just want something that's a little bit different. On top of that, this is a fully machined knife, all smart technology, CNC, um, CAD, the works. However, what you're getting is a limited production. I want to call it a semi-custom, really, because this is, it's a custom knife in the way that it was designed, in the way that it, uh, the whole way that it feels. It's just that it's being made on a production level. So that's something that it's, you know, there's a little bit of a gray area there. But there's no real need to put a label on something that's so unique. It's, it's already standing out uh, among the crowd of knives that are out there. The other great thing is the fact that you're getting something so wild, so unique, and so incredibly well built for only 300 bucks, And you get a couple of different choices in your colors and finishes. So... I'm going to tell you right now, for 300 bucks, it is going to be damn hard for you to find a knife that's going to have this level of detail and this level of quality and be anywhere near this cool. So let's go over the, uh, the specifications on the knife first. Uh, first off, he is naming the designs here, these two, the uh, Sabretooth and the Equilibrium, as part of his Flow collection. And uh, the reason why Sam chose that name is because what he's doing with these is everything is going to flow with organic lines, the natural flow of those organic lines to create something that's a little bit different. I mean, even the detail work that's been done here on the, uh, the final version of the Sabretooth, all these organic lines, everything flows, there's nothing square on um, you know, any of his products. And that really is something very, very cool. You even see that here in his uh, lock bar, in the lock bar cutout on the Equilibrium. Very slick, very cool. So what you're getting, let's get the blade back open, is S35VN steel. It is a big, big blade. 3.8 inches. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And everything about this is tricky. Look at the way that it had to be ground. I love the fact that he did the satin flats. Most people would have just blasted the entire thing. They would have matched with the frame perfectly and off to the races. But instead, he chose to give you a little bit of extra time by putting the, uh, the extra touch of the satin flats on there. By the way, these are extremely, extremely sharp. He did a fantastic job on that final edge, making something that uh, really is useful beyond just looking cool. So you get the sandblasting, you get the, the hand satin flats. The action on this thing is really, really well done. I'm not a huge fan of how big the flipper tab is. It doesn't need to be this big because the action is so good the detent is so perfect that you know the flipper tab could have been half that height and still work great but it's going to be awesome for any kind of flipping you want to do you want to push button it boom you can certainly do that you want to light switch it 
you can certainly do that. It flies out with authority, a nice solid thunk when it locks up, and it's very, very smooth. Here's the detent sucking the blade in. Very, very nicely done. One of the things that I find most interesting is the fact that the blade disappears into the frame completely and that he has stylized the frame to match right there where the harpoon begins on the blade. And I gotta tell you, that's gotta be a bitch to figure out mathematically as you're designing the knife to make sure all of that lines up as perfectly as it does. Uh, 6AL4V titanium on the frame very heavily contoured. Let's see if we can give you a shot of the contouring. Let's see how nicely rounded all of that is. The mill pattern that shows up is very very fine and it gives you a degree of tactility. You'll, you'll actually feel it's almost like a, uh, an anti-slip kind of grip on there. Completely custom pivot with the HEA logo right there on this side and he has actually mirrored it on the opposite side where it says uh, E-A-H. Kind of I'm sorry, A-E-H would be it. So that's actually kind of interesting the way that he chose to do that. Another nice thing that he's done here, and I don't know if the camera is really going to show it. You can see it a little bit in there. He has scalloped out so much of the interior on this frame that even though this is a really large knife, it's extraordinarily lightweight. I don't know the weight on it, but it is really, really lightweight. I can tell you right now, any other titanium frame lock I have in this size is tremendously heavier than this knife is. He has blind screwed the pocket clip, created a nice design to complement the overall flow of the knife. It's not just some afterthought, oh, I'm just going to stick this clip on the knife. Um, you can tell a lot of time went into the design just on the clip. Great retention on there as well. It's easy to get in the pocket, easy to get out, uh, but great retention when it's in there. Nice clean work on the lock bar relief. One of the things that I love is that he is relieved inside both sides of the frame so that you can more easily access the lock. I would have expected that to be a little bit further up, but it actually works great. It gives you the perfect amount of leverage because this has a lot of lock bar tension. So if it were, I think, any further down, it would have been almost impossible. Any further up, it might have felt a little bit too easy. So it's uh, brilliantly done as far as that goes. Let's see if we can get this to uh, open up and show you the steel lock bar insert. You also That will also double right there as your lock bar over travel prevention so you can't overextend that titanium lock bar I mean he's got everything everything is thought out in this all the hardware in the knife is titanium so if you decided hey uh, I'm not crazy about the gray and the light blue I want to change things up you could take your pivot you could take your standoffs the screws and the clip and also the screw holding in the uh, the over travel and, and lock bar insert and anodize those any color you want. Uh, you have that freedom. Let me show you the packaging and then, then I'm going to show you the other color variation uh, that he has offered. Here's something else that I like. He's offering the complete package. It's not just, hey, I designed a really bitchin' knife and I put a really great price on it, but you get a really nice feeling when you open the packaging. You get that extra bit of pride of ownership uh, by having this. So here is the uh, outer packaging here. So it's a sleeve over the box. And the box is a magnetic lid box. You get that open and you're greeted uh, by something uh, clearly from the 1980s. Max Headroom would approve. And then a little note inside. It says, read first. It'll be worth it. Maybe. Thank you for buying an HEA Designs product. We truly appreciate your support and hope you enjoy. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the newsletter. Yada, yada, yada. Instagram, Facebook. And uh, this box has some surprises for those who look. 
Now, I was thinking about just uh, not even going there and letting you discover it on your own, uh, but fuck it, what kind of video would this be if I didn't show you everything? I'm going to bear it all. So here is the purple version of the equilibrium, and you get kind of this uh, OD green or dark gold, maybe, uh, anodized hardware. And once we open that up, <clears throat> down in here, you're going to have a nice little slipcase made for the knife. I don't know that anybody's really ever going to use that, but it's a really, really cool thought to include it. We'll take that out. You get a, a nice microfiber polishing cloth embossed with the HEA logo. Um, you get a sticker. You get a vinyl pouch. I'm sorry, a vinyl patch. And you get another sticker. So, couple little goodies he's thrown in there. I mean, hey, all this shit costs money. This isn't free. It's not tremendously expensive, but it's not free. And to, to factor in all of this into a $300 total price for a kick-ass knife, and then to get all that nice packaging, and thoughtful packaging, uh, I think is a really, really good deal. So let's talk about the Peipel. Oh, how cool is that, man? So if you're a little bit more of a standard dude... You might want to go for the, the plain titanium gray. If you want to be just a little bit wilder, that purple is pretty kick-ass. It really is. Now, the whole idea behind this was Sam wanted to create an off-the-wall, completely different kind of knife design that you don't see anybody else making. And he said, what if I took the style of a 9th century scimitar, brought it into a modern 21st century look, and made it fold? So he's got a folding scimitar that looks every bit as modern as you could possibly ever design something to be. I mean, this does look, it doesn't look classic, it doesn't look vintage, and it certainly doesn't look 9th century. But he's brought the feel of the scimitar uh, into this very, very modern design theme. He's also given you a lot of work in these titanium handles. Nothing was done cheaply on this. Uh, I believe he told me it took him about two years to develop this knife. And he went through hundreds of modifications and different iterations as he started to go into the prototype phase. And... I remember that just from the saber tooth. How many times he belabored even the tiniest little detail. This this little comb, uh, which I use as a uh, as a beard comb. You could probably use it as a head comb. I'm sure. I don't know. Um, this little comb is a fully functioning frame lock flipper. If this was taken out and he made a blank that was a sharpened knife blade, this would be an ultra-compact little EDC knife. It operates the exact same way. It's got a detent. It's got an over-travel in the lock bar. It's all titanium. I mean, this was built to the specs of a high-end knife. So, there, I don't think there's any thing in Sam's brain that allows him to do anything half-assed. I've had a lot of opportunities to talk to him about these knives and about the comb, and he shares the same level of excitement that we as collectors do. He wants, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize, he wants when people purchase one of his products to get something that's unique and exciting. When you pull this out of your pocket and you show one of your knife buddies, they're never going to have seen anything like it before. Aside from its unique design, aside from the fantastic action and the, uh, the, the wild color choices, it's really comfortable in the hand. And I was skeptical because of this. By the way, all of this has been dehorned. That looks like a sharp edge, but it's really not. It's nicely rounded off, but it still maintains the look of a sharper edge. When you're holding this in the hand, that falls right between these two fingers. So you don't even realize that it's there. The tail hooks around your pinky, 
almost in a fighter style, which again works with the, uh, the scimitar uh, overall theme. And the fact that that blade sits down in there almost flush from pivot to tip with the frame. I, I totally dig that. I think that is such a cool idea. That blade has completely disappeared and that is not a tiny ass blade. And a blade with that degree of curvature that had to be hard to figure out how to do without making a, a completely banana shaped handle. There it is in the hand. Guys, I'm telling you, for 300 bucks, absolute 100% pure fucking win. Uh, I know that uh, because of my delay in getting this video out, they have already been released out there. There are some Instagrammers now that have theirs. Check out what they're saying. They're saying the same thing. They love the knife. Dealers have already started to get these, so do your Google searching. You can buy them directly from HEA Design's website. There's a lot of different ways to get them. It's not really a big secret at this point, and, and I apologize for not getting this out sooner to give you a bit of a heads up before they start selling out, but read what other people are saying as well. Don't obviously just take one man's opinion. Uh, you guys know I'm not going to bullshit you. If there's something I don't like about a knife, I'm going to fucking tell you that's the way it is, but... I don't want you to think that just because I have these sitting here uh, and that I've developed a friendship with Sam that I'm for some reason going to mislead you. Read what other people are saying. They're blown away. Not just for the money. Let's take the $300 price equation off the table. Just the fact that you're getting this level of quality overall for any amount of money. The fit and finish. There's something different about this knife and I don't really know how to put it into words it is so smooth it is so refined it almost feels overly refined it almost feels impossible to have made this way this is one of those knives that if this were a custom knife maker that says I make everything by hand you'd look at him and go you are so full of shit because this knife is so perfect there is no way human hands could have done it to this degree of consistency and quality. Unless you're, you know, you know, Michael Walker or Ron Best or somebody charging, you know, four, five, eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars for a knife. This is the kind of workmanship that you struggle to attain. This is the level of design and organic flow of design that you struggle and struggle to obtain. Sam has nailed it. It is about as perfect as any knife could ever be. You might be thinking, okay, it looks great, it operates great, it's got great fit and finish, nice details, but for an EDC knife, it's big, and I don't know how practical the blade is. Look how much belly you've got up here toward the tip. How much slicing and cutting you can get achieved with that. You have a long, straight cutting edge, Nice deep belly in here and a very sharp piercing tip. There is no section of this blade that's unusable. Fact. Also, you've got a nice choil up here so you can choke up. Your thumb drops right into the back of the harpoon and you could do that very fine cutting, carving, and peeling very, very easily with this blade. Is it large? Fuck yeah, this is a big knife. But it's so lightweight and it's so thin that you don't even realize it's in your pocket. Now, if you're one of those uh, little hipster dudes that wears the little skinny jeans where the pockets are, are that shallow, no, this is not the knife for you. Uh, perhaps you'd like something uh, in, a, in a Hello Kitty theme. But for any normal man wearing any normal pants, the length of this handle is going to fit in there just fine. It's four and a half inches long when it's closed. So it's going to fit in there just fine. This is something that you can carry easily and it's going to be an impressive blade and it's going to do everything that you want it to do. You know, it's not made for batoning, but that really no folder is. So there's nothing that you can really pick out on this knife and go, 
that's not practical for me. It is. And the super lightweightness of it, you'd almost think the fucking thing was made out of carbon fiber. It's that well done. Um, I'm going to stop now before I continue on. I'm just going to keep gushing. I'm extremely impressed with these knives. I'm very thankful to have gotten the chance to play with these. Um, you will be seeing a gray one in my collection very, very soon. And uh, I already have my comb. I love my saber tooth. Um, everything that Sam's doing, and he's talked to me about some future projects, very, very exciting stuff. So keep your eye on HEA Designs, even if a scimitar isn't your particular style. Bookmark his website. Check out his Instagram, HEA Designs. Check out his Instagram. Follow it. And see the cool stuff that's going to be coming out in the next year to year and a half. And I truly think there's going to be something for everybody. With that, guys, I'm out of here. I'm going to go take care of this the last remaining shit of this cold and get it out of my head. Get back in the shop. Uh, I apologize. My hands look like crap. But now that I'm becoming a knife maker, my hands are going to look like shit forever. And I'm so happy about that. I will share with you guys uh, my designs in a future video. Um, they're selling as fast as I'm making them, so I'm not getting a chance to bring any home and do a video. But you can check out my Instagram and check out my occipital design and uh, tell me what you think. By the way, uh, I did change my Instagram name. It is no longer Jim Skelton TV. It's Jim Skelton Knives. Very simple name change. Uh, so if you've been looking for me going, where the hell Jim go? Uh, I just changed my name last week. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now, and I'll catch you on the next video.